Hi everyone, this is Jim. Welcome to episode 48 of Opening Basics. In this video I'm going to talk about the Catalan opening. The Catalan opening is an interesting, uh, has an interesting origin story. It got its start in 1929 in the city of uh, Barcelona where there was a chess tournament going on. And uh, Barcelona is in the Catalan region of Spain. So uh, there was a Spanish nobleman there and he asked uh, Tartikover, who was one of the players at the tournament, uh, Savili Tartikover, uh, asked him to do something to honor the region and its long history of association with chess. So at that uh, tournament, uh, Tartikover invented the Catalan opening and uh, played it. So um, let's put the opening on the board. It starts out, uh, there's a couple of different ways to get into the Catalan. I'm going to start out looking at the uh, d4, d5 move order because that is the, uh, well, we're in the d4, d5 openings in this uh, series right now. So, um, White plays c4, the normal move, and uh, black plays e6, the queen's gambit declined. And at this point, uh, white chooses to play the move knight f3 rather than knight c3. Knight c3 is actually the most popular move in this position, but knight f3 uh, prepares the Catalan. After knight f6, this is the normal move, then g3. And this is the start of the Catalan. Um, just to back up, even here, knight to uh, c3 is the most common move, but uh, g3 is is the way to get into the Catalan. And so this is the starting position of the Catalan opening. We have the pawn on g3, pawns on d4 and c4, and the knight on f3. So that's the starting position. And black has played centrally with the uh, knight f6, the pawn on d5, supported by the pawn on e6. Um, let me show you the other way to get to this exact same position because it's kind of interesting. It comes from a completely uh, different direction and that, hap that is if uh, black replies with knight f6 here instead of with d5. Uh, white continues with c4 and black goes e6. So this is a very common way of playing. Black could be going for the uh, Nimzo Indian, the Queen's Indian, or many other setups. Uh, openings can proceed from this point. Um, and here uh, the most popular choices for white are knight to c3 and knight to f3. But instead, uh, once again, white alters by playing the move uh, g3. Uh, now, black normally continues with d5 because um, this uh, c-pawn is, is becoming a little bit uh, weak in a way because the bishop is moving off to uh, the g2 square. So it makes sense to challenge for the center in this position and knight to f3. And now you see we're in exactly the same starting position. The pawns on g3, d4, c4, the knight on f3, and black with the knight on f6, and pawns on e6, and uh, d5. So um, regardless of how you get to this point, this is a place where um, black has a choice to make. Um, if he takes immediately, that's known as the open Catalan, and that's what we're going to look at in this video. And uh, if he plays any other move, it's known as the closed Catalan. Even if uh, black takes later, which often happens, and the position opens up, it's still considered the closed Catalan. Uh, in fact, the most popular moves here for black, other than taking, are either bishop e7 immediately, or bishop to b4 check, followed by bishop retreating back to e7. And those are the uh, closed Catalan positions I'll be looking at in the next video. But in this video, we're going to look at the open Catalan where black just takes. I mean, why not? It's, uh, this bishop is, is obviously intending to move to the g2 square, so it's not going to be around to uh, take back. You know, normally white, not normally, but often white will play with uh, e3 or e4, and uh, bishop takes c4, or using the bishop to at least uh, defend the c-pawn. So it's a bit provocative the way black, uh, white is played by pushing this g-pawn forward and signaling his intention not to even um, bother defending the uh, c4-pawn. Um, so after taking, white continues with his plan, putting the bishop on g2. And uh, after a6, which is the most popular move here, it's, it really is turning into a gambit. Uh, black can hold on to that pawn and keep it. Uh, a6 is preparing the move b5, although it may be dangerous to play this immediately. You always have to uh, uh, keep an eye out on what's happening on that long diagonal. But uh, let's first look at a couple of other moves. There, there's other popular ways to play it um, where um, black pretty much gives the pawn back immediately. So c5 is one of these lines where um, 
Black is not really trying to hold on to the pawn, but is just trying to uh, create space for his pieces, create a little pressure on the center, and just have a little bit more space. Um, so white just continues with castling here, and knight to c6. We get some harmonious development from black. And now knight to e5 is the main move. Um, now it's not the only move here. Um, already white can uh, recapture the pawn, for example, with uh, queen to a4. This is a way to round up the pawn, say bishop d7, queen takes. This is a respectable line, um, and it should be okay to play for both sides, actually. White's got his pawn back. Um, another way to get the pawn back is to start by taking on uh, c5. And then this leads to a queen trade. So you would only play this way if you were comfortable playing without the queens. Uh, black gets the pawn. Black grabs this pawn, but then white goes knight bd2 and, uh, and is going to get this pawn back. And there's a position where it's not, not really safe to play, uh, to play uh, b4 here because um, of tactics on the long diagonal. But uh, let's go back to this position right after um, knight c6. Instead of playing one of those lines that grabs that pawn back and gets the pawn back immediately, uh, the most common move here is knight e5, uh, just continuing to play actively with his pieces. And, uh, you know, the knight and the bishop are starting to coordinate uh, somewhat dangerously, it seems, on the c6 square. And, uh, and white is just ignoring the fact that he's a pawn down. Now, the most common move here is bishop d7. I just wanted to illustrate some of the uh, dangers of this position. <clears throat> so... First of all, you might wonder about this d4 pawn. Isn't that just hanging? <laughs> right? It was defended by the knight and the queen and attacked by the knight and the queen, and this knight moved away. Uh, but in fact, it is uh, quite solidly defended. For example, if um, black tries to take it with the knight, then uh, you can kick that knight back. And after the knight goes back, then you have a, a winning sequence here. You take here with check. Uh, let's see, uh, yeah, there's no, there's no exchange. He's got to take back. Then you take here with check. And then you grab this pawn, and you're winning the rook in the corner. And this is a winning continuation for white. So that was, uh, that was not safe at all. <laughs> um, so you can't take with the knight. Um, and if he takes with the queen, uh, another misfortune happens. Queen takes. Um, he can grab on c6 immediately undermining the queen. Let's see, white goes on with the queen trade and then takes the knight back, but then the bishop comes in here and forks the king and the rook and once again is winning material. So that uh, d4 pawn is a poisoned pawn. Black cannot safely take that in any way, so that's why knight e5 is a, a good and interesting move. Um, the other way uh, black could play it, aside from bishop d7, the main move, is, uh, you know, it could consider taking here. But this leads to the kind of position that uh, white is happy with. So this pawn takes back. It hits this knight. Um, black can throw in the queen trade. Um, but then eventually a knight is going to have to move. And then um, <clears throat> white can get a solid pawn structure with f4. And also knight to a3 is a good way to round up this pawn. So white, white gets his pawn back and has uh, a lot of uh, space here. So that's, that's the kind of position white is happy with. Um, instead of the queen trade, black could retreat the knight here. And then f4 immediately, just, just grabbing all this space. And this pawn is weak and it's going to get rounded up. So anyway, um, that's, let's see, yeah, so that's... Uh, after knight e5 if he wants to take. That's the kind of position that would lead to some advantage to white in both of those lines. So the normal move here is actually bishop to d7, just defending on c6, you know, trying to deal with some of those threats. And at that point, um, let's see, do I have another move here? Yeah, knight to a3. Once again, this idea. Um, just rounding up that pawn. And uh, that's a decent position, but it's also a position that, uh, that uh, black can survive as well. Black has dealt with the threats on the long diagonal and uh, can develop his other bishop and castle. And uh, white will have a little more space, and uh, yeah, there'll be some interesting play in the center. So a uh, position that's uh, playable for both sides. So that's 
this um, C5 move as, a, as an alternative to some of the main lines. Another way to play this is with uh, knight to C6, after which uh, queen A4 is usually played, preparing to round up the pawn. And here's another interesting wrinkle. Black can hold on to the pawn for a little bit with this uh, bishop B4 move. Uh, check, so white blocks. The knight comes out to defend the bishop. There's this exchange. And then uh, white just castles. So white is still a pawn down here. Um, <clears throat> but, um, well, notice once again, this pawn can't be taken. Here it's a little simpler to see. This knight is uh, needed to defend the uh, knight on uh, b4, so it can't take that pawn. So this pawn is safe. Uh, the normal move here is uh, rook to b8, actually just getting the rook off of that uh, diagonal. And, um, and then white continues with knight to a3, rounding up that pawn. So another way to, to get the pawn back. So those are those are two different ways from this position that black can play to basically uh, get that pawn back. Here, let's go back to the start of the uh, Catalan, the, the Catalan starting position, and look at this uh, from the start again. So we were talking about open Catalan, black takes, white plays bishop g2, and the two moves we just looked at were knight to c6 or uh, c5 to be followed up by knight to c6. And both of those lead to playable positions where uh, where uh, black is basically giving the pawn back in order to get some play, uh, some development for his pieces. Um, so the main move here is actually a6. And this is, uh, I have an example game where this was played. And we'll take a look at that in a bit. But uh, let's just continue. Um, in, the, in the game, uh, white continued with knight e5 again. But the main line actually continues with uh, castling. And then black develops with the uh, knight to c6. White goes with e3, shoring up the center there. Black continues with the uh, bishop to d7. So we're just getting this kind of normal development. But it goes to show how long uh, black is holding on to that extra pawn. And now uh, knight to c3 is a respectable way to play. And uh, White is still just playing for activity in the center and on the queen side and not in any hurry to uh, round up that pawn. And uh, the games continue from there. Um, this, uh, an equally popular line is uh, queen to e2, which is kind of interesting, I think. Uh, the queen is looking at that pawn and asking black if he really intends to defend it. Uh, black can play b5 here. Uh, this knight is now defended. So the knight hopping into e5 is not uh, an immediate problem, although it may be a little bit uh, <laughs> a little bit risky. Certainly, black has to be careful and check the tactics every move after that. Uh, white normally goes rook d1, black goes bishop e7, and then white goes b3. This is what I wanted to show: is that uh, often uh, after after uh, getting his pieces deployed. Actually, I don't know if I could say that. He hasn't actually dealt with those queenside pieces. But at some point, White often uses these typical undermining tactics to create some weaknesses on the queenside or to get the pawn back. So so b3 is the idea here in this position. Okay, so that's uh, what I wanted to say in terms of uh, the specific variations. Let's take a look at this uh, game. The game I wanted to show you was played between uh, Vladimir Kramnik and Alexander Morozevich. First, I wanted to say a few words about uh, Kramnik and the Catalan. The Catalan opening, since its invention in 1929, had sort of bumped along as a uh, second-tier opening. It, uh, you know, would occasionally make its appearance at the top levels, but at but it was never uh, the primary weapon of uh, anyone until uh, Kramnik came along. And Kramnik was the one who really uh, forged it into a, a, uh, an opening suitable for play at the very top levels. And he used it uh, extensively in his career, uh, starting out at, in his rise up to the world championship. And, uh, and as the world champion, he, used, uh, he continued to use it. Uh, recently, since he lost the world championship, um, he has broadened his opening repertoire and played lots of different openings, so he no longer plays it as much as he used to. But uh, but he's the one who made the, the major contributions to the opening and just uh, needs another champion if it's to become a, a top-level weapon again, I guess. 
Um, now, this particular game was played in 2007. It was played at the FIDE World Championship. And at that time, the, the World Championship in that year, actually, in 2007, the FIDE World Championship was decided by a round robin tournament. It was an eight player double round robin. So every player got to play every other player twice. Uh, the Swanathan Anant won the, won the World Championship that year, and uh, Kramnik came in second in that tournament. Um, but anyway, let's get on with the game. Kramnik starts off with knight f3, uh, and Morozevich goes knight f6. So you might think this could be an English opening or a reti opening. So we see yet another way to get into the uh, Catalan setup. So um, uh, Kramnik continues with, um, not with d4, it continues with c4. And uh, Morozevich goes e6. Uh, Kramnik goes g3. And uh, Morozevich goes d5. So this almost looks like a reti opening. Um, and so if, uh, if Kramnik had continued here with um, b3, for example, that would probably be classified as a reti. Um, but he played d4 at this point, And now we've got the Catalan set up. So we have the pawns on c4, d4, and g3, the knight on f3. And with black pawns on e6, d5, and knight on f6. So the starting position of the Catalan, Morozevich selects the open variation by playing d takes c4. And uh, Kramnik goes bishop g2. Morozevich plays the main line of the open Catalan with a6. And Kramnik goes knight to e5. Now, uh, I already showed you the move uh, castles. That's actually the main line. The uh, move that uh, Kramnik plays here, knight e5, is um, the second choice in the opening database, but also a respectable way to play. Um, Black has a few different ways to respond to this. Um, c5 is a reasonable move here, undermining the center. We saw ideas like that in the previous variations. Um, Morozevich went with uh, the bishop check, bishop b4 check, also an idea in many of these variations. Um, Kramnik decided to block with the knight, knight to c3. Morozevich played uh, knight to d5, and here Cam Kramnik castled. <laughs> So this is the first uh, kind of challenging moment. Uh, there is just a, uh, a pawn on offer here. Uh, that's attacked twice and only defended once. So black can win a pawn by force. Um, and there's actually nothing wrong with the move bishop to d2. This is also uh, fine. Uh, you know, Kramnik is just playing in a more adventurous way by castling. And uh, so black has to figure out if it's worthwhile grabbing that pawn. Although, knowing Kramnik and his opening preparation, you could probably figure that he has something up his sleeve. Just to show you what might happen, if uh, Morozevich grabs here, he grabs the pawn, uh, you know, not only, not only is he getting this one pawn, he's gaining it with tempo on the rook, and uh, he's gaining a second pawn here on d4. So, uh, what's the problem? <laughs> well, the problem is the move queen to a4 check. And uh, this is where things start to get a little bit awkward for Black. And the fact that Black hasn't developed his queenside pieces, hasn't castled his king, all this is coming into play. And also this uh, pressure along the long diagonal. Actually, the best move here is to block the check with um, b5. Notice if the king starts to run, um, this rook can come to the d-file and skewer. And, uh, well, if the king goes in the other direction, I'm sure something would go wrong there as well. <laughs> but anyway, um, b5 is the, the best move according to the chess engine, Afterwards, the uh, after which the queen can drop down to uh, a3, looking at the uh, f8 square, preventing black from castling for the moment, and uh, also leaving two pieces hanging. <laughs> so the, uh, the knight here is hanging, that's not defended, and the rook in the corner is hanging. So um, best play, once again, is for the queen to go ahead and take the knight. And then white doesn't uh, grab the rook right away, but throws in the move bishop to f4, getting his last uh, minor piece off the back rank and into the game. And then after the queen moves, uh, white is going to round up the rook. And so white will be up the exchange. Black will actually have three pawns for the exchange, if you count them. These are three extra pawns here. But uh, with all of White's uh, peace activity, uh, Black's difficulty in castling and lack of development, uh, it's actually an excellent position for White. So anyway, let's go back to the game. After, uh, after Kramnik castled, leaving this uh, 
pawn hanging here on c3, uh, Morozevich uh, decided not to take it and just castled here. This might also be a uh, well-known opening theory that he knows just as well as Kramnik. Um, so Kramnik goes queen c2 now, defending c3, so uh, things aren't falling apart there anymore. And uh, Morozevich goes with b5, opening up this diagonal, so he, he does have to be careful, but at the moment the, uh, the knight is defended twice by both the queen and the pawn, so it seems like things are held together. Kramnik trades off the knight, and of course uh, Morozevich takes back with the pawn, and then plays b3, starting to undermine the structure, and Morozevich replies c6, uh, reinforcing things. I just want to show what goes wrong if you don't uh, pay attention over here and play uh, play a little bit casually, ignoring the threats, because it kind of illustrates uh, the uh, the tactics that uh, White has at his disposal here. So this actually hangs the c-pawn. A pawn takes is playable. You can't take back with the d-pawn because, uh, because you don't want to give up the rook in the corner. So you take with the b-pawn and then the knight can take. And once again, um, you could take the knight and give up the exchange here, but uh, and in some way or another, you're going to end up in a worse position. You've just lost that extra pawn that you had, and uh, black is still behind in development. So, um, so you have to be careful here and uh, reinforce the structure. So this uh, helps block up the diagonal so that it is possible to take back with either the d-pawn or the b-pawn. Um, but at the same time, it does uh, block the natural development of the queenside knight. And, uh, and white has pressure on that already, so it's going to keep, keep black's uh, um, queen side under pressure for a while. But at this point, you can see that uh, black really does have an extra pawn here. And uh, white is not getting it back immediately. In fact, uh, white uh, kind of ignores that and uh, plays for pressure on the center. Well, this is still putting more pressure on these uh, queen side pawns, this move e4. And, uh, you know, uh, Morozevich at this point is getting kind of tired of having this knight here on e5. It's a pretty annoying piece, always putting pressure on c6 and also looking at some squares on the king side. It may turn around and facilitate a king side attack if white or if black isn't careful. And I guess this is another point I want to make about the Catalan. It's not just about this uh, Catalan bishop. That's what you hear the most about in the Catalan. But often you do get this knight on e5 and uh, that can be a very strong piece in the Catalan as well. And it coordinates with that uh, bishop on the c6 square. They're both looking at, at the c6 square. Um, so anyway, yeah, black plays f6 to kick the knight away, and Kramnik doesn't move it. This is like the, uh, the second extraordinary moment in this game. He just takes a pawn and says, go ahead and take my knight. And now this offer is just too much for Morozevich to refuse. He goes ahead and takes the knight. <laughs> so this is an interesting point uh, where if you want to, you might consider pausing the video and seeing if you can figure out what what compensation does white get uh, for giving up a whole piece. It must be some pretty significant compensation here. So uh, yeah, you can think about it for a while if you want to. Yeah, go ahead and pause the video. I'm going to start talking about it. It's uh, White's turn now, um, because Black just grabbed the piece, and uh, White starts off not with a piece move, but uh, with more pawn moves over here, just continuing to tear apart this structure on the queen side, supported by all these pieces, the queen here and the bishop here primarily. Um, and uh, Morozevich tries to fight back with e takes d4. I, I did briefly think about this move, uh, c takes d5, but of course uh, bishop takes d5 supported by the pawn here, forks the king and the rook. So that's totally not playable. So um, e takes d4, trying to weaken uh, white's pawns, but that lets white take on c6. I guess there's really no way of preventing that. Well, maybe pushing the pawn forward would have prevented that, but that would introduce other problems <laughs> on the diagonal here. So um, uh, pawn takes c6 was played, and now bishop to e6, trying to get the bishop off the back rank, and uh, it does allow this c7 move. So um, black is prepared to give back material now. He, he is up a whole piece, and if he can give back some material and get to some kind of reasonable position with an extra pawn, maybe this won't be too bad. 
So, for example, if Kramnik uh, goes for this idea of winning, winning some material back, he could play c7, and after queen takes c7, uh, he could take the rook here. But then the queen can take uh, on c4, and this is not so bad for black. Black is down the exchange. If we look at it, it's two rooks and two minor pieces versus one rook and three minor pieces. So um, black is down the exchange. But uh, his pawns are actually starting to get kind of threatening. This is a passed pawn. If um, white just tries to go for an endgame by trading queens, then he's going to have a pair of passed pawns that are going to be very, going to be very dangerous. So uh, Kramnik this time doesn't take the bait, but uh, plays a different move here. He plays c takes b5, uh, keeping his pawns together and not rushing to grab the piece back. So very interesting play from Kramnik. And now um, Morozevich goes d3, uh, counterattacking White's queen and hoping to disrupt some of White's plans here. Um, it's not actually, it's not easy to find a good move for Black at this point. I think Black is already in a significant amount of trouble. The chess engine suggested playing rook a7, getting it out of the range of uh, this uh, bishop here. But after uh, rook b1 hitting the bishop, um, d3 hitting the queen, <laughs> queen b2 hitting the bishop, d2. Um, so this actually wins a piece uh, because this pawn is threatening to come in and queen. So bishop takes, bishop takes, uh, picks up another piece. So uh, having sacrificed uh, a knight, uh, white also sacrifices a bishop. But uh, then white gets to play this b6 move and, uh, and white is going to get his material back and maybe more with these advanced pawns on the queen side. So that's that's a, a line that's not too appealing, even if it's a best play for uh, black. <laughs> so I, I think black is already in trouble here. So anyway, Morozevich tried to move uh, d3, hitting the queen. And once again, uh, Kramnik does not respond immediately by moving his queen, but he plays c7 now. And, uh, and now I think uh, it is, uh, well, best play once again is probably to continue taking. So pawn takes queen, pawn takes queen, getting a new queen, rook takes back, and bishop takes rook in the corner, a takes b5, and then bishop to g5, the bishop, uh, cancel that, bishop to g5, bishop gets off the back rank, and uh, with tempo against the rook. So what is this? This is white being up the exchange. Uh, black still has that passed pawn, which looks dangerous, but it's not uh, connected um, directly to the um, the B pawn here, and it looks like uh, White can hold off those pawns and eventually uh, get his uh, realize his advantage uh, with the uh, being up the exchange. If you count the total pawns, it's just four pawns to four pawns. So materially, White is up the exchange, but Black does have this dangerous looking. Um, past pawn. So this might be something black could try for, but objectively uh, white is better there. Anyway, uh, Morozevich, not wanting to simplify it so much, uh, tried to go for a counterattack with uh, queen to d4. Queen to d4 hits the loose rook in the corner, so it's a pretty tempting move. Uh, it is leaving this rook hanging, and it's also leaving this knight hanging, but uh, well this queen is hanging too, so stuff is hanging all over the board. Um, Queen a4 is what Kramnik played, getting away from the, the major threat there, uh, since he no longer has the possibility of taking the queen. Um, so he has to get his queen away from being taken. And, uh, and the others doesn't, not much to be gained by queening this pawn, it just gets taken right away, so at most uh, uh, white would gain a piece that way. Um, so getting the queen out of the way, but this seems to be uh, completely winning for white at this point. There's a couple of tries here that are kind of interesting, so I wanted to show you um, before I get to the game variation. One try is uh, d2. You just keep pushing that pawn forward. Um, this is another place where um, white gives up more material temporarily. Um, now, the bishop can't take back because uh, it's pinned against the queen, so the queen has to take here. And now uh, white can grab the rook in the corner. The knight is still hanging, so the knight has to get out of the way. And now um, queen takes a6 can be played here. And once again, these uh, 
these pawns are going to come through and be the deciding factor for white. And if we count the material, let's see, white has two rooks. Two rooks and a bishop. The queen's defending the bishop now. And uh, white ha and black has one rook and uh, three pieces. So um, black actually has two pieces for the rook, but these passed pawns are going to be the decider over here. Um, so that was if black tries d2. Another move that uh, black could try in this position is uh, taking the rook in the corner. After all, the, the queen was placed on that square in order to make that threat, partly at least. Uh, so why not follow through on it? But after queen takes a1, uh, white can take the bishop. And then now the knight needs to move. The knight is still under threat. The rook is still under threat as well. But uh, knight d7 is just uh, loses the exchange. So that's the better of the two choices. And now there's a key move. Uh, right in this position, which is queen to e4, a double attack hitting the rook and hitting the bishop that uh, that uh, turns the tables for white. So this also is winning for white. There are a few tries here. Um, for example, rook to e1, defending the bishop, runs into uh, queening, <laughs> queening, distracting the rook. So the rook can take the new queen, but the old queen comes and takes the bishop with check and uh, is going to also round up that knight and white will emerge a piece up. Um, another thing that uh, uh, black could try here is uh, rook to f8 and just getting the rook out of trouble and giving up the bishop but hoping to hold on. Um, but after this the only move really is king to uh, h8 and white will pick up the knight. If the uh, rook blocks trying to defend everything then the queen here actually leads to a forced checkmate. So once again um, after the king moves and white takes the queen, and white takes the knight, then once again white is a piece up. So uh, none of those uh, uh, moves work. Uh, so let's go back to the game. In this position, uh, Morozevich played knight to d7, just saving the knight here. And now um, white continues with bishop to e3, so getting the bishop off the back rank, but with a tempo on the queen. The queen drops back to uh, d6, taking a look at this pass pawn, hoping to round it up. But now the bishop can grab the rook in the corner. And the other bishop can go to uh, f4, chasing the queen away and incidentally, incidentally defending the pawn on c7. Queen runs to f8. And now b6. And now uh, white has a pair of passed pawns over on the queen side. And if we count the material, what is it? It's two rooks and a bishop versus one rook and three pieces. So it's two pieces for the rook, but these uh, uh, past pawns are just killer. Um, uh, let's see, knight to e5 was played here after bishop takes. The idea is that Morozevich is going for some counterplay with uh, queen to f3. So he's just trying to open, open that file up in a hurry. Um, this sort of desperation move. Um, the queen just comes back to d1 to offer a queen trade. This would be a pretty simply winning endgame. This queen drops back to um, e4, still hoping to line up on this diagonal. Uh, Kramnik pushes on with b7. Uh, rook to f8 was played. Now c8 with the queen. <laughs> And uh, bishop to d5 was played, <laughs> so setting up setting up the mate threat. So if uh, white is in a hurry to get another queen, uh, he will get mated. But uh, there's the simple move f3, and uh, and black resigned. Morozevich gave up at this point. Notice that uh, he can't even take this pawn because the queen here is uh, pinning that rook on the back rank, so that pawn is adequately defended. There is a check here, but it doesn't actually do much. The king can just run to g2, and once again this pawn is still safe. Uh, he can at best pick up the bishop. That That is a possibility here, but um, well, white is basically a queen up at this point. <laughs> he can uh, trade off that uh, queen for the rook. Let's see, that's, that's probably not the best way to play it because the queen is guarding guarding that square. So, uh, but anyway, white is, white is just up massive amounts of material and black resign. So anyway, pretty interesting game. And that uh, concludes this video on the open variation of the Catalan. And the next one, I'm going to look at the uh, closed variation. So see you then.